Okay, so now let's cover the landing animation and sound effect. So if we play our game here, we, are, we want a little stun and a sound effect. So for this, if you go to the link in the description, I will have a, a model here called landing visual effects. If you open it, you're gonna get this little attachment here. You wanna put this under our you're gonna put it under a human root part under our starter character right here. So put that there. You can delete this part right here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create two separate folders here. Folder, folder. First folder will be called sounds, and one called events. We'll be creating two separate events. So remote event, remote event. First one will be called visual effects event okay, we'll call it landing vfx event then this one will be called sound event which would be a very very handy event and here we're going to put our landing sound and you can go ahead and find one i already found one in the toolbox a while ago so i found this sound effect here I'm just going to copy here uh I'll sh if you want to use this sound effect it's going to be on the on the screen it's a sound effect from the toolbox so you should be able to use this put under your instance here this is our sound effect here now what we want to do is we want to create a server script here should be a script come back to this in a second we're going to reference our two remote events up here um we'll create a section called events local view Landing VFX event equals game dot replicate storage dot events dot landing VFX event. Make make it another one for the sound. Sound sound event. And now for our sound event, what we're going to do is f for our character landing. Uh, we'll be able to play the sound but first we want to slow down the character whenever they land so what we can do is create a function local function landed and we'll set the humanoid dot walk speed to 16 humanoid sorry set this to 2 um, dot jump power set this to 0 so we can't jump after after landing and we're going to create our landing animation here copy this call this land anim and put your respective landing animation id in there so i got mine land animation right here i got mine put your landing animation in there i'm going to reference this land animation up here land animation and anim whenever we whenever we land we're going to play this animation land animation play and now what we want to do is we want to create an event listener for this and animation dot uh, ended connect function now and if this animation ends, we'll set our jump power back to 50 and our walk speed back to uh, 16. And now when we actually, one more thing we're going to do is that if the player was sprinting before they jumped, we'll resume their sprinting. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use our function. Uh, we're going to disable our camera bobbing first whenever we land, in case we were sprinting. So camera bobbing false. If, actually no, no if statements are needed because we're going to use our resume sprinting function that we created before, which already checks if the player was sprinting beforehand or not. Resume sprinting. And one more thing for our resume sprinting uh, function is that we want to enable and disable the camera bobbing here as well. So camera bobbing. This is if they were sprinting, so we'll set that to true. 
set this one to false. This will make it sell whenever we land. When our land animation ends, we can resume sprinting. If we were sprinting before. So we check this. Oops, I forgot to I forgot to call the function in. Whenever we land. Landed, there we are. See it does a little effect. Oops, I forgot to set our jump power back to um, dot jump power back to 16 whenever the animation ends. Let's see if this works. So this should be 50. So yeah, now this, this should work. We jump, we do a little animation. Now, if I spam jump, it won't let me jump until the animation is completed. And now, what we want to do is we're going to add the visual effects and the sound effect and we can play this over here so sound event via server and we're going to put in parameters and quotation marks the name of the sound in here i'm going to call this landing sound copy that uh, put that name here and our server is going to receive these two remote events uh, let me copy the reference to them uh, we're going to fire the uh, visual effect event as well. Fire server. We're not going to pass in any parameters here because this is going to run one visual effect. I'm going to put these two here. Landing VFX. Let's do the sound one first. Sound event dot on server event connect function. I'm going to get the player and the sound name. And have local sound equals to game dot replicate storage dot sounds. I'm gonna pass in our sound name here. I'm gonna clone this. Clone. Now what we're gonna do is sound dot parent is equal to our player dot character dot humanoid root part sound dot ended connect function. And we're just going to destroy our sound here. Sound destroy. Now for our visual effects one, landing VFX on server event connect function. Uh, we're going to create two variables: VFX one, local VFX two, two. Um, this is because we have two visual effects under our humanoid root part under dust. So be equal to our player here. Player dot character dot humanoid root part dot uh, dust dot wind one. And make it equal to wind two here. I'm just gonna do visual effects play no emit two VFX two emit two. And th this can, this number can be whatever number you like. This can be like one, two. I just like the visual effect to emit twice. And now, if we look back at our script here, um, oh wait, we have a resume sprinting here. Yeah, we have resume sprinting here. Um, we have to make sure our camera bobbing turns off though. Camera bobbing, false. Spell there we are, and now landed. This should work now. So if I jump, hmm, the sound isn't playing. Did I put a sound ID in here? Landing sound. Oh, wait, I forgot to do sound play. There we are. Now this should work. And now our little landing effect works. Another issue with our directional movement that I forgot to correct earlier is that when we're on shift lock, our jumping animation actually has very, very low priority. Even when we run, this looks really, really weird. See our jump animation. It's not overwriting or sprinting. And we'll have to manually script this. Check. 
whenever the player jumps, we're going to loop for our character's animations and stop all other animations, for example. Um, for example, if the player is sprinting, you'll stop the sprinting animation. And we can do this through an if statement by looping through uh, v in hum get get playing animation tracks. Make sure you spell this correctly. What this does, it creates a table of all the currently playing animations of your character. What we can do is we can index each individual animation if v.name is equal to whatever animation is here. For example, if it's, I don't know, front, front walk anim, or we can check if it's equal to back walk anim. It's two all statements, back walk anim, left walk anim. Make sure these are spelled correctly or else you get an error. I mean, or else it won't it won't do the check properly. Left walk anim, right walk anim, and if the player is sprinting as well, it should be sprint anim. And if any of these conditions are true, do uh, do you have an error here? Do the stop. Oops, it should be an if statement, my bad. And this should go in here. That, and now this will, this will manually stop all other animations for jumping, see? And if we sprint as well, this will work too. And uh, sprinting continues too. Now let's talk about our dodging animations and how we're going to implement uh, dodging. 